Well, hello, friends. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up Qt Creator to work with Serenity. Because I've been asked that a few times, and I guess the easiest way to, to do this is to make a video. So here I have a um, fresh checkout of the system, I think. Um, yeah, nothing to get. So um, what I would do now is I would just start Cube Creator. Um, so I'll get this one here. This is just, um, let's see which version is this is for. This is some, I got it from the Cube Creator website. Um, so this is the latest version-ish, hopefully. But there shouldn't be any big difference. And then uh, what you would do is a uh, new file or project, and then import existing project. And then you navigate your way to the project directory. So now we're here. Um, and then we give it a name. I'll just call it Serenity. And then um, it will like offer to generate a file list. Now, normally, I just kind of ignore this part. Uh, I just say, like, yeah, yeah, fine, whatever, do your thing. Um, and then don't add to version control. Um, and um, then what I do instead is that um, I manually manage the, um, the file list. So I have this script here. It looks like um, like this. And I guess I, sh I could just put that into the code base, actually. Um, let's do that right away. We'll put it in meta. I'll call it um, refresh. Trinity Q Creator. Um, something like that. Uh, and then we'll just do that uh, uh, the script I use to refresh my Qt creator project files. <clears throat> um, so what I then do, like whenever I add or remove a file from, from the project, then I just run the script. So basically this is what you would do now. Uh, and that's it. And um, it it just updates this file here so that it contains the name of every uh, source code file in the project. That's that's all that it does. Um, and you have to you have to run this whenever you add or remove some file from the project. It's probably some easier way to do this, but this is uh, the way I've been doing it so far. Anyway, um, now the important thing to do when we when we get what we want to get set up now is that you open this thing called serenity.config as it's part of your uh, project. Now, um, what I do to get this thing to pop up down here is control K in case you're not familiar with Qt Creator. So you just press control K and then you get this thing and then you can type anything in here and it'll just um, autocomplete the different files in your project. So you want to open up serenity.config. Um, because this is where we put macros that the C++ parser will uh, include when it's parsing files inside the inside the Qt Creator. So here we want to define some stuff. So this one is important because this makes us look like we are the um, C++ compiler that comes with Serenity. Um, and then we also, uh, let's see, which ones do we put out? It's the, um, I usually do debug and sanitize pointers. Um, just that it, this sort of matches what we build with. So if you open up makefile.common, um, you can see these are the two defines that we have that we build with. So I just put them here as well. And this makes Qt Creator um, parse things just as if, or very, very closely to um, what our actual compilation process would do. And then the last thing here, which is possibly the most important one, is that you need these two kernel and user land. And then whichever one you're editing at the moment should be enabled. So like if you're editing user space code and user land, then you want this one to be enabled. And if you're working on the kernel, then you want this one to be enabled. And it may, it just makes the parser in Qt Creator work right. Um, and it's like this because we uh, share a bunch of code between the kernel and user land. It's just compiled slightly differently depending on which one you're in. So. I'm just going to leave this in user land because I guess that's what most people would be working on. Okay, remove this gunk up here. 
Um, and then we also, I also usually open up the CXX flags thing here and I say um, M32 because we're using a 32-bit compiler and um, W consumed, I think, to get the consumable annotation checking stuff. Um, I think that's what I normally put there. Okay. And then finally, it's serenity.includes. This one is a little bit of a mess because um, what we actually want in here is dot, 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 slash, dot, dot. Um, libraries, um, libraries, libc, and servers and kernel, I think. I think those are the ones. Oh shit, yeah, and then we want one of the two chain ones. Um, not root, uh, I think it's this one right here. So let's see, I think I got these right. So this is what you want this file to look like. Uh, I realized that, that this is a, a bit confusing perhaps, but the thing is that we don't really, this project doesn't require you to work with QCreator. So um, it's just one of many editors you could use. That's why I haven't checked in any kind of project files for QCreator because it's just the editor that I use, right? So anyone is free to work with whatever editor they use. And then, but if everyone were to uh, put their editor config files into the project, then it would just be like this huge mess of that. And we don't want that. So, um, but like understanding how your editor environment works is an important part of uh, using your editor. So you, you should like really uh, familiarize yourself with these things and the editor that you, you use. Anyways, um, so I think Basically, we're ready to do a sanity check so we can open like vector.h and see um, if things are looking kind of sane-ish. <laughs> uh, we can see here if and def underbar underbar serenity underbar underbar is not compiled as it grayed out. So that's an indicator of sanity. And we can op open up something like stdio cpp. Um, and we can see that aside from some like little whiny warnings here in yellow, um, there's not like a whole bunch of red, right? So that's what we're looking for. Um, and let's see, let's go in something like terminal.cpp. And we can again see here that it's just a little bit of yellow, but nothing crazy. Um, and maybe we'll try, uh, try the auto completion here. We'll say like um, window, Wait, what class am I in? Oh, <laughs> I'm not in the class I thought I was. Uh, I, I meant terminal widget. We'll go in terminal widget and we'll try to do window pointer. Yeah, you can see here that it's auto-completing correctly and everything. Um, so everything's looking good. And then, yeah, so this is this is how I set up QCreator. And then um, when it comes to building, then it's just a matter of always going in the kernel directory and then running makeall.sh, which requires your root password because of the way that we build the disk image uh, for testing. We, unfortunately, we currently require the root password for that. So if, if you know a way to avoid that, I would, would love to hear about it. But um, right now we, we have to use mount. So that's why we ask for the root password. Then when you have it built, then you can just dot slash run and start the system. And look at that, it even boots up. Cool. Okay, so I guess that's basically the whole thing. Um, and then, yeah, so like I was saying, I'll, I guess I'll show you what happens if you add a file, but then you don't add it to the um, then you don't run the scripts. So say that we make a new file in the kernel called like cool.cpp. Then the thing is that if I try to do cool here, then it doesn't show me the file. And this is very annoying. So then I just have to run the refresh script. Boom. And then now cool works. 
And that's what it's for. That's the whole point of it. So, um, I guess that's basically it. So now you know how I set up QCreator and you can do it just the same way yourself. Um, if you have any questions or um, something that wasn't quite clear, then, then do let me know. Um, otherwise, I guess I'll just say happy hacking and uh, thanks for hanging out and I'll see you next time.